Okay, so first thing, we always do a sound check here at the Creative Contessa. Um, can you hear me? And the music. So, welcome to our this evening's beginner, beginner medieval ballroom dance class. Um, sorry, I just wanted to stop. Tonight, we're going to be covering a beautiful dance called a bassa danza, which literally means a move. And this is a slow and flirtatious dance form from the 15th century, and it was called the queen of the ballroom in East Europe. And this particular dance, Lauro, was composed by Lorenzo de' Medici in Magnifico, the ostensible prince of Florence in the 15th century, even though Florence was technically the problem. Oh, yes, so I was just about to get to that. If you would like me to be able to see you and what you are doing, please do turn your video on. Um, you will not be recorded. I have my screen pinned, so I can see you, but you will not be included in the video. So no worries about showing up in places you might not like to be seen. So yes, if I can see you, then I can sort of tell what's happening and maybe provide constructive feedback on how to improve, but it's up to you. I do prefer to see a human, it is true. Yay, a human face, so lovely. <laughs> So this dance, as I was saying, written by, composed by Lorenzo de' Medici, and lauro means laurel wreath. So the wreath worn by poets laureate and also historically uh, given to victors or great artists or poets. So my beloved husband and I are going to start by demonstrating this dance so that you have an idea of what you're getting into, and then we're going to dive right into the, the actual dance. So demo of lauro. My love, are you positioned and ready? Remember, there's no intro. <laughs> so I apologize for my scurry. These musicians are in quite a haste to commence the music. and he managed to step on my train at the very Every end. Time. Okay, so this is basically a dance that is entirely in 6-4. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's just take a moment to listen to the music and find the rhythm. You pick a different piece. So you're listening for the underlying strum, 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 strum. You've got the top line, which is the melody, and it's beautiful but useless as far as dancing is concerned. And you've got that nice strum, strum, strum. And each of those strums gives you three counts of your six four. So let's go ahead and just start walking to the music. That's what this is. Really, we're just walking to the music in different ways. And also, that's all of my skirts. Normally, I would only wear one of the layers. Put our weight on our right side. Put the screen. We're just going to walk. And step. 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 
are actually called Senpi, single. Because we're literally just stepping single steps. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Come up on the balls of your feet. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, well, thank you for letting me know because that is an important note. Oh, right, I turned the music up. There we go. Okay, good. Can you hear me better now? Okay. So, go back to walking. So, we just our right foot, our left foot is free, and we're just going to walk single and single. Single. Step. Yep. yep. And please, um, for questions, it's actually better if you come off of mute and ask me because I don't always see the messages. And then I have to kind of approach my device, which is very far away. So feel free to unmute yourself at any point if you have questions. I should have said that at the beginning. Step. 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 So to recap, these are called Sempi or singles, and they're called that because uh, they take the slower of the step variation. They generally come in pairs, and in this dance, they will definitely come in pairs. One, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, the first step of any dance from pretty much any period, if you think about modern ballroom dance, it's basically composed of singles and doubles to which you do different things. So let's go ahead and do a sideways version of that single step called a continenza. And it looks like this. I start with my weight on my right foot so that my left foot is free. And I'm going to sway up and down onto my left foot. So my feet don't move. I just sway up and down on from one to the other. Up, down. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four. So these are called continents because they don't technically move anywhere. Like continents, people used to think that continents didn't move. Like a continent, they don't move, you're just swaying in place. So in general, the continent, they will come in pairs, and in this dance, they will come in pairs as well. So let's do something to these continents, eh? So what I want you to do, start facing in one direction, and do the first continent to the quarter turn backwards over your left shoulder. So that I go from being facing the back of my great hall, my Narcissus tapestry, and I sway onto my left foot pivoting at the same time. So I'm going to have my husband stand next to me relative for, so if we're facing each other like this, or facing Narcissus, no, no, next to me, oh, next to me. All right, so I'm going to go from facing Narcissus to facing my husband, so I sway onto my left foot. And that takes one continent that's three counts. So the timing on that would be one, two, three. And that leaves my weight on my left foot. So now my right foot is free. And I'm just going to sway back onto my right foot facing the direction I currently am. So the whole figure is going to be like this. Right quarter turn left, no turn, swaying back onto my right foot. So let's go ahead and try that. Weight is on our right foot. Our left foot is free and I'll come a little closer. So that I'm closer to the camera. <laughs> so I'm going to sway, ready, and sway quarter turn. Oh. So this, we're just going to make this evening, Heather, we're going to make you the follower in this dance, just, just for the sake of simplicity, because there is a leader and follower role. And if you're on the right, 
you're on the right, you are the follower. If you are on the left, you are the leader. And there, there in this dance, there isn't so much in terms of leading and following. It's only this one little swaying figure where it matters and where there's different things that happen. Okay, are there questions about Sempi or the Continente, the little swings? Just to confirm, this is a quarter, we're going 90 degrees? 90 degrees, that is correct. Yep. So, so I go from facing my back wall to facing my side wall. Yep, 90 degrees, correct. Good question, thank you. Okay, so hold on to that or it'll come back later. We're just going through the pieces now, We're going through the pieces. So let's move up from our singles to what's called a double, or in the Italian, a doppio. So a doppio double isn't just two steps, two single steps. That's mathematically a double, but not physically a double. A double is called a double because the steps in the double are double as fast as a single step. However, in Bossa Dansa music, we've got this syncopation. So for the double step, it's da, 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 da. So this is the rhythm of our double. And this is how it will look. The weight is on my right foot, so my left foot is the foot closest to you. Three steps. Step, step, step. So rhythmically, the slow, quick, slow. You want to think of it in terms of rhythmicality. And one double is one set of those three steps. So let's go ahead and just try that. Weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. Ready, and step, step, step. And at the end, that third step should have all the weight of my body upon it so that the foot that's trailing behind could easily be lifted and applied to some other more interesting task, which will probably be another double. So let's put our weight, if it has already left, put our weight on our left foot as we've just done a double left. And try a double right. Ready, and double, two, three. Again, at the end of that double, your weight should be firmly and solidly entirely upon the last two weeks. So in this case, my weight is on my right foot and my left foot is just so excited about the opportunity to do something else. So let us go ahead and do sets of doubles, just double left, then a double right, then a double left. You'll notice that basically we're just walking. Hold on, I think it's going to be loud. Musicians love shams. Okay, so back to the nice, gentle, soft music. I'm just going to walk series of doubles and as I was saying in essence this is just walk alternating left and right in a specific rhythm so the rhythmic pattern is going to be left right left pause right left right pause left right so let's go ahead and give that a try we did in our right foot our left foot is free and double two three right Da, da. Left, da, da. Right, da, da. Left, da, da. Right, da, da. Left, da, da. Slow, quick, slow. 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 Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Okay, are there questions about double? Okay, then let's go ahead and combine singles and our doubles. So the pattern is going to be, and this is not an accidental pattern, is going to be two singles and two doubles. Two singles and two doubles. And we're just going to drill that back to that. <clears throat> so, putting our weight on our 
right foot. Our left foot is free. So the first set will start, I lie, every set will start with the left foot because we're not doing really even numbers of steps. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. Single, single, double, two, three, double, two, three, single, double, two, three, double, two, three, single, single, double, two, three, double, two, three, single. Single, double, two, three. Ryan, if you set up the other laptop, I can't zoom. Double, two, three. Double, two, three. One more set. Single, single, two doubles. Double, two, three. Double, two, three. Okay. So this is actually the first part of the dance, more or less. We're about to get to the last part, the ending of the first part of the dance. So just structurally speaking, dance consists of four parts. The first part is two singles, two doubles, and ends in a figure called a riverenza. And that riverenza is less of a step and more of a motion. So I'll demonstrate it first. Wait, is on my right foot, left foot is free. I go back into a lunge, and I come back up. You might think of it as a curtsy or a reverence or an obeisance if you are fluent in 15th century English. Most people these days aren't, I don't know why. So it takes three counts to go down and three counts to come up. And you should only lower yourself to a point from which you can comfortably recover, right? It makes no sense to do an impressive lunge and then never come back up again. So you decide for you how low is comfortable. There are some descriptions from chroniclers of the era talking about they bowed low to the ground. Right? And I, that's probably a sign of both uh, honor and reverent respect and also of puissance, of physical agility. Let's go ahead and put our weight on our right foot so our left foot is free. Our left foot is free. Oh. <laughs> that's me entering from another room so I can have a second screen. So. Weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. And we're just gonna go down for three counts and then come back up for three counts. And down two, three, up two, three. Keeping your weight on our right foot, let's try that again. And down two, three, up two, three. One more time. And down two, three, up two, three. And if you're enjoying this beautiful lunging, uh, we drill this heavily during my footwork drills class. <laughs> so are there questions about the reverenza, the reverence, the honor? Okay, if there are no questions, then let us go ahead and yes, put it sorry, together. Oh, sorry, question. Hold on, let me pause the music. Hold on, hold on. Okay, question. They're spiting with the mute button. Uh, is it okay. always done with the left leg? Um, so mostly, there are a few interesting exceptions to that. Um, in three-person dances, <laughs> in three-person dances, frequently if the center has to do a reverenza to someone on the left, they'll do it with the left foot, and then when they do it to the person on the right, they'll do it with the right foot. But but in general, your left leg, or your right leg, I guess, is actually the one that's really taking the hit here. <laughs> Um, yeah, in general, it's going to be a little one-sided. Good question. You're the first person to ever ask that. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and one more question. Um, mm -hmm. When we are doing our walking steps, yeah. uh, the single and the dopio, are we always doing a ball lead or a toe lead? So, yes. When we step uh, forward. Right. So technically, ideally, your your torso should go with your feet. So you're not a toe lead. Oh, like right, a, right. A ball lead or a toe lead. Yes. So yes. So it seems to be based scant evidence from this era. Um, the, the dance masters weren't terribly concerned with being explicit in these manuals. These manuals were about getting patronage rather than actually providing useful instruction. But from the pieces of evidence that we have extracted, that I have extracted from the manuals. 
it seems that you really should be, yes, um, sort of doing this rising and lowering, this raising and lowering motion seems to be very explicitly. And so it is very much ball of foot lower, ball of foot lower, ball of foot lower. Can you yeah. come all the way down on each step or only on a step that takes? Um, so for this, that's a good question. Very so it's, it's sort of, it's step units. Think of it in terms of step unit. So one single, one sempio is a step unit. Mm -hmm. And for that, you raise and lower yourself. All the way down. So, but a double is a step unit that consists of three steps. So for that, it's up, up, lower. And then down on the, down. the end of the unit. Exactly, the end of the unit. So the lowering comes at the end of whatever the unit may be. That's right. Actually, that is not a beginner question. Very well. I have a dance background. <laughs> then good. Then you're going to get, then I don't need to go slowly with you at all. Well, damn, I should have asked that at the beginning of the class. <laughs> we could already be at the end of the dance by now. <laughs> other people might watch this at some point or an edited version of it so that that's that is a valid point that is a valid point. For, uh, <laughs> okay great thank you but good, good questions i like these questions keep them coming okay so let's go ahead and do two singles and two doubles with this reverenza at the end and for your purposes my love if you could come and be a human <laughs> do do what you do best be a human <laughs> um I want you to imagine that you are dancing with someone. So you're on the right and your hands are, are kind of naturally low between you. So there, there's no need to lift or hold up an arm, right? Um, and if you are the follower, which if you're on the right, you are, your hand is going to just sort of slot down on top of, and we'll demonstrate that from the front like this. It's a very, it's a very natural, there's not a lot of styling here. And so when we do our reverenza, whenever we do a reverenza, we want to make certain that we're not doing it to the wall. <laughs> so we're going to slightly angle towards each other, sort of creating a right angle with our bodies, right? So I call this the social V because we're facing, we're looking at each other enough that we can look at each other, but it's easy enough for us to rise and pivot forward with that reverenza. Yeah, okay, so this is how the reverenza would look then. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can continue onward with whatever comes next, which in this dance is not that. <laughs> I was just moving. Okay, so let us go ahead and try two singles and two doubles, two sempi, two dopey with a reverenza. My, all of my skirts up. <laughs> So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free, six for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six, single, single, two doubles, double, two, three, double, two, three, reverenza, one, two, three, four, five, six. And at the end of that reverenza, ideally you're facing forward again so that you can continue onward with the dance. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try it again. Weight is in our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and single, single, double, double, two, three, double, two, three, reverenza, one, two, three, four, five, six. And at the end of that, ideally, your weight is on your right foot, your left foot is free, and we are ready to continue with section two of the dance. So that, I call that section uh, for choreographies. I try to break dances down into discrete sections and give each section a name so that it kind of allows me to access the steps. So this section I call the long riverenza hello because it seems like everything is just building to that final moment where we really get to engage during the riverenza. Okay, so are there questions about the long riverenza hello? Two singles, two doubles. Riverenza. Okay, so then moving on, the second section, we have to learn a new step. Yeah, that's sun. Oh, good. Now I can see you, and you're not just a resplendent body moving through divine light. <laughs> okay, so our rip create this this next section, we learn a new step. The step is called ripresa in Italian. 
And this is a species of sideways double. And I'll demonstrate it first from uh, the back. Starts with mate on my right foot. And in general, the rule of thumb in medieval dancing and Renaissance dancing is that you will lead with your left foot. There's 1% of occasions where that will not be true, but for the most part, left foot is your lead and everything alternates. So this is what David Appraisal left looks like. Left, cut left, and then a repraiser right, right, cut right. And again, we've got that raising and lowering going on. So I'll demonstrate that from the side. Left, cut left, right, cut right. And rhythmically, it is the same as a dopio. Da, 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 pause, da, 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 pause. In this dance, they come, reprise come in pairs and as solos. <laughs> so the first set we'll do is a pair. So let's go ahead and practice together, reprise left and right. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. And left, cut, left, pause, right, cut, right, pause. And I just realized I didn't explicitly state that at, in the case of reprise, at the end of the reprise, you gather that free foot like so. So weight is still entirely on my left foot, but I've gathered that free foot so that I've gathered my momentum and I can then shift easily and comfortably back to the other side. So at the end of each reprise, we gather with the free foot. And it's important that you make sure you keep your weight on the last foot to actually step and that that gather doesn't become a close. Because once you close your feet, then all bets are off about which foot should come next. Okay, so reprise left and right. Let's try that. Ready and left, cut, left, gather, right, cut, right. Okay. So after those reprise, together with our partner, we will now do two singles. You're going to notice a pattern. Each section has two singles in some number of doubles. This section has two singles and one double. So weight is on our right foot at the end of that reprise of right. Let's do two singles and one double forward. Single, single, one double, double, two, three. And now our right foot should be free. And we're going to close this section with a reprise to the right. Reprise uh, right. So two singles, excuse me. Section starts with reprise left and right. Then we do two singles and one double and a reprise of right. And because of that, I call this section all the reprise because it just feels like it's nothing but reprise per, per square sempio, per square single. So let's go ahead and try all the reprise. Weight is on our right foot. Our left foot is free. And reprise a left, da da, and right, da da, two singles, single single, one double, double, two, three, and reprise a right, right, two, three. Let's go ahead and just drill that back to back to back, all the reprise, because candidly, the section ends with your left foot free, so you can just loop it. So drilling, here we go. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free, all the reprise, ready, and left, two, three, and right, two, three, two singles, Single, single, one double, double, two, three, reprise a right, right. Again, all the reprise, left, da, da, right, da, 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 two singles, single, single, one double, double, two, three, reprise a right, right, two, three. Again, reprise a left, two, three, and right, two, three, two singles, single, Single, one double, double, two, three, repraise a right, right, two, three. Okay. Are there questions about repraise and or the all the repraise section? Okay. So then moving onward, let's go ahead and put those two sections together, section one and section two. So to recap, section one, I called the long riverenza hello. <laughs> two singles, two doubles, riverenza. Section two was all the reprise. Reprise left and right. Two singles, one double. Reprise the right. <clears throat> okay. 
Beloved, could you come in? Oh, sorry. He's on the phone. He's being sucked in Gifford. So a note about a lot of Basa Dansa music, and I just want you to listen. There's no intro. What we have are two pickup notes. So the music is gonna go da-da, and then you start with your first single in this case. So just take a moment to appreciate your da-das at the beginning of this. So those two little, those two little quarter notes, that's all you get. That's your intro. You're welcome. Okay, so after our two little dadas, the long river and the hello, two single. Single, single, two doubles. And one, two, three, four, five, six, reprise. And right, two singles, one double. You dance me into furniture. He always dances me into furniture. We have a great big room and it doesn't seem to matter. Okay. Questions about that opening, those two sections. Okay, splendid. Uh, would you like to do it again or move onward? Okay, got it. Okay. So from Let's take a different piece of music this time. Again, you have two little dadas. Single, single, two doubles, double, two, three, double, reverenza, one, two, three, four, five, six, represa, two, three. Right? Two singles, single. One double. The praise are right. Let's go ahead and do it from the top. Two singles. Single. Single. Two doubles. Riverenza. The praise are left. Two singles, one double. Praise the right. And now see if you can remember it on your own from the beginning. Probably the most challenging aspect of these dances. <clears throat> Questions? Okay. So, moving onward, uh, my love, could you please fetch me Ebreo, the Seo Practica Arte de Lanzare, one of the two green dance manuals? We have two of them. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to do a little reading, a little reading to try to put you in the spirit of this era. So, these dances were done by the middle classes. And they were done by the upper classes. The middle classes were, of course, emulating the upper classes. And amusingly, the upper classes were sometimes emulating the lowest classes. Um, not in these, not in basa dansa particularly, but in some of the other forms of dance they were doing. So I thought, because we are ladies, I thought you might like to know what the dance master prescribes for ladies dancing in this era. So, um, Master, this is from a book called De Practica Seuarte Tripudi, 
which means on the practice or art of dancing. And it was composed by a Jewish dance master living, uh, who's born in Pesaro in Italy in the first half of the 15th century. And he was a student of another dance master uh, whose works I also teach. And he converted to Christianity eventually because basically that was the only way his career could actually progress. And he wrote this manual that has this kind of Socratic dialogue where the student asks a question and he answers and the student asks the next perfect question and he answers. Unlike Socrates though, this man actually answers the questions and doesn't just ask more useless questions that dissolve the fabric of society. So <laughs> um, the young man is asking about rules for dance and um, the good master says, rules for women. It behoves a young woman and a virtuous woman who delights in understanding and learning this discipline in art to behave and conduct herself with far more discretion and modesty than a man, of course. Double standards, nothing new. She therefore should fully understand and observe perfectly the aforesaid elements, rules, and exercises so that she understands measure and is well skilled in music and is also attentive and able to remember it and knows how to partition the ground. Her bearing should have the proper measure and an airy modesty. I'm not certain how you have an airy modesty, but there it is. And her manner should be sweet, discreet, and pleasant. The movement of her body should be humble and meek. And her carriage dignified and stately. And I'm not certain how those four things combine properly, but okay. Her steps should be light and her gestures shapely, nor should her gaze be haughty or roaming, peering here and there as many do. But she should for the most part keep her eyes modestly on the ground. Not however, as some do, who sink their head on their breast. Rather, body as nature itself, as it were, teaches us. So that's an interesting set of conundrums to try to fit into your dance. Be stately, but be modest. Do not peer at the ground, but don't look people straight in the face. <laughs> it's very impressive. Yeah, exactly. I'm, what woman ever mastered this? I shall say none <laughs> ever like did all this. Shapely, okay, right? Don't flop about, for sure. But yeah. Modest, modest. Modest but stately. <laughs> it's a neat trick. Well, it, it is a neat trick. So I hope you enjoyed that window into a past that sounds suspiciously as double standard as the present. It was fascinating. <laughs> okay, then let us move onward to section three of the dance. So section three is the sexiest figure of the dance. Beloved, I require your sexy, handsome self to demonstrate against. So I'll dem we'll demonstrate the figure again. I call this section swaying and circling. So this is how it looks. So we sway to face and then we take right hand and we circle two singles and a double in this direction. Then we switch back to the other direction. One. And we end facing. We actually end facing each other. Okay. So that is, I call this swaying and circling. Now let's break that footwork down. So we start, remember when we were drilling those swaying, swaying, those continenze, those swaying steps with the pivot? So this is where that comes in. And we drilled it specifically for the follower. The leader does the inverse because he's turning to face the other direction. The weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. I am now facing Narcissus. At the end of this, I'm going to do that 90 degree rotation to be facing my sidewall. So, ready and two continenze, one, two, three, four. So it's only the first continenza that pivots. The second one just shifts back laterally. Okay, let's try that again. Weight is in our right foot, left foot is free. Ready and pivot back. One, two, three, four, five. And it is also possible here to add a little bit of what's called shoulder shading. So I shall demonstrate that. So I kind of lead a little bit forward and around with the shoulder of the foot or side of my body that's leading. So you can add this kind of gentle, modest, but stately, sexy sway to your shoulder. And, and that applies to uh, reprise as well. So 
I can add a little bit. I can lead forward a little bit with the shoulder from the side that looks like this. Right, so it adds a little rotation to the torso. That seems to be prescribed in the original manuals. If you read closely what they're talking about doing with legs and shoulders and head and body. That's an option you can add that in. Since you have a dance background, that should probably work for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try the swaying to face our ghostly partner one more time, and then we'll move onward from there. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready and continenza left and right. At the end of which our left foot is free. Beloved. So now we're going to take right hands with our ghostly partner. And we're, we're, we take them low like we're shaking hands. So they're, they're just low between us. And actually the lower you put your hands, the closer you can get to your partner, right? If you hold your hands out, then there is no proximity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you'll never get around. You'll never finish this figure in time. So, <clears throat> so we take right hands with our partner and we're going to circle clockwise around this kind of center point with two singles and one double. And it doesn't matter how far you go because we're then going to pivot at the end of that double, switch to left hands and go back the way we came. So, same amount of footwork in each direction. That's why I say don't work on getting a specific amount around, just do whatever two singles and one double does for you. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. Two singles and one double clockwise and single, single, double to pivot at the end of that so that we're now facing counterclockwise and we take right hands with our partner. Ah, sorry, left hands, left, the real left, the real true left hands. Our right foot is free. So now we're going to circle back to place with two singles and a double. Single, single, well, and end where you started facing in the direction in which you started. Hypothetically, you have a ghostly partner and you're looking into his handsome eyes. My ghost is very solid and very tangible. Yeah. So let's try just the circling figure just the circling figure. So we're facing our partner. We take right hands and we circle two singles and a double. Ready and single, single, double to pivot. Single, single, double to facing. And ideally at the end of that, your weight should be on your right foot, your left foot should be free. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the swaying the continenze to sway to face into the circling figure. So we start facing forward in our rotation of dance, which in this era was also counterclockwise based on the visual evidence that we have. So we're facing forward in our counterclockwise rotation. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Continenze to face, ready, and continenza taking right hands, then single, single, Double to pivot, left hand single, single, double to facing. And you'll notice there's lots of pausing that allows you to accomplish this figure without too much ado. Okay, let's try that again from facing forward. Weight is in our right foot. Ready and on the Nenza right hands, single, single, double to pivot. Single, single, double to facing. Okay, so, and yes, you, what do you do with your hands? So at that point, we drop our hands. We drop, but we're still facing our partner and that is as it should be. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that figure one more time. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready and continenza right hand, single, single, double to pivot. Single, single, double, two, facing. Okay. Are there questions about swaying and circling? <laughs> so that's my name for this section, swaying and circling, because sway to face, and then you actually circle, taking hands with your partner. When you are, so the way I seem to be dancing, I always have my back to you when you're doing 
or uh, cause it ends up like uh, reversing direction. Right, yes. So you are correct. Can you guys see that? You want to watch it one more time? So when I do it, I always have my back too. Yeah. Got it. No problem. We shall demonstrate. My love, she needs a demo. She needs a demo. Thank you. The whole thing, swaying and circling. Okay. So swaying and circling all the way through. And one, two, three, four, five, six, circling clockwise. One, two, pivot. Left hands counterclockwise. One, two, pivot. And you can see. Did that did that clarify? Right, and that's yeah, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> okay then. Thank you. You're welcome. Then let's go ahead and put it all together from the top. <clears throat> okay. And um, I recommend that you go on mute uh, because otherwise it can Zoom will fight for sound supremacy. You can see it. We can see us on your screen. It's so it's so very inception. Okay, so from the top, the first three sections we're down. We're almost to the end of the dance, so we'll just do this a couple of times and then cap her off. I love. Again, two little pickup notes. Two singles. Two dance. Double. Two three. Double. Two, three, reverenza. All the reprise. Left. Two, three. Right. Two, three. Two singles, one double. Reprise right. Swaying to face. Right hands, two singles. that again from the top two little pickup notes single single double two three double facing reverenza reprise a left and right two singles one double Right. Continente to face. Right hand circling. Single. Single. Double. Two. Seven. Single. Single. Double. Two. Facing one more time from the top. Two singles. Two doubles. Reverenza. All the reprise. Two singles, one double. Reprise right. Playing the face. And then two, three, four, five, six, single. Single, one double. Pivoting, left hand. Last piece of our dance. Are there questions before we cap it off with the grand finale? Okay, excellent. So we end facing our partner. We end facing our partner. And we are now going to do reprise left and right facing each other. So this is another really kind of sensual, sexy figure because we sort of reprise moving away from each other to our own respective left and then back together. So it's a sort of Gentle, slow rubber band. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll do it uh, facing this way so that you can see how this looks. So we're praise the left, left, two, three, and right. Hopefully with nothing that melodramatic. <laughs> so we're praise the left and right. Now, facing, facing, I wanted to rotate. So now the last section of the dance, we're praise the left and right, two, 
you know, each section had two singles and three doubles, the most doubles we've done in a row yet. Hence, grand finale, denouement at last. So what that means is that that first single is going to be pivoting onto your left foot. Yeah, pivoting onto your left foot. So the first, mentally speaking, there's no extra music for that. It fits into the time. So there's this sort of vuoto that happens um, between the bars of music. Vuoto is this empty space. It's a 15th century Italian word. And it's during the vuoto that you pivot step, sort of between the reprise left and right. So in terms of timing, it looks like this. Reprise the left, two, three, and right, two, three, and step. So it's that and you're pivoting onto the step. So let's go ahead and do reprise the left and right, and two singles followed by three doubles. And then we'll give you the capping, the crowning piece that comes at the end of that. So reprise the left and right, then forward, two singles, three doubles. Weight is in our right foot, left foot is free, and left, two, three, and right, two, and single, single, three doubles, three, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three. Now, in an ideal universe, weight is in our left foot and our right foot is free. So we're gonna rotate around so you can see us from back. So we're going to do a figure that is called a volta tonda, which just means a complete turn. And it's described in this dance as consisting of two singles and a represa. So in essence, we're gonna be walking all the way around over our left shoulder. Figure looks like this. Two singles to get halfway around our little private circle. So that's 180 degrees, two sempi, circular, two circular sempi. And then a curving repraisa right back to place to finish our circle, repraisa right. So I have just walked a complete circle ending more or less where I started that turn, that volta tonda. So in whole, in whole, that looks like this. Right, left, right, left, right. So that means that first, the repraisa starts with another pivot step, pivot step. So let's go ahead and try that together. Weight is in our left foot, right foot is free. Ready, and two singles, single, single. Pivot, reprise, uh, right. Okay, one more time. Weight is in our left foot, right foot is free. And single, single, reprise, uh, right. Well, you ended the correct direction every time. Does that make sense? Excellent. So let's go ahead. That is the end of the dance. And that's the end, end of the section and the end of the dance. Dance then repeats. So let's go ahead and do that fourth section, starting with the reprise facing our handsome ghostly partners. So weight is in our right foot. Recap, reprise left and right. Then, yes, I would like you here. <laughs> reprise left and right, two singles, three doubles. And then that double, last double flows into the volta tonda. So weight is in our right foot, left foot is free, and repraisa, two, three, repraisa, two, three, forward, two singles, single, two, or three doubles, double, da, da, two, da, da, one, here comes the volta tonda, step right, left, repraisa, right. And at the end of that, your left foot should be free. Try that again, facing our ghostly partner. We're praising left and right, and left, two, three, and right, two, pivoting forward, single, single, three doubles, double, da, da, double, da, da, double, volta tonda, step right and left, and reprise the right. Okay, are there questions about anything in that fourth section? Okay, then we are equipped. The dance is danced twice through. And in, I think at least one of the versions, the original versions, possibly in both of the original versions that have been handed down to us, the end at the end, it actually says they dance it twice and then they go sit down. <laughs> so I feel like maybe there was an issue with people hogging the dance floor. <laughs>
So we're going to do Lauro twice, I shall call it. There is just enough music for twice through in this particular rendition. So two little pickup notes, then the long river ends a hello. Two doubles. Renza. One, two, three, four, five, six. Reprise. And right. Two singles, one double. Reprise the right. Playing to face. One, two, three, four, five, six. Circling. Double. Other side. Facing our partner, reprise the left and right. Forward two singles, three doubles. Double, two, three. Double, two, three. Double, two. Volta tonda. Step right, left, reprise the right. From the top, two singles, two doubles. Reprise left and right. Oh, two singles, one double. Oh, that's a nice change. Reprise right. Swing and circling. Right hands, two singles. Single. Single. Double. Reprise. From the top. Three doubles. Pulse of Honda. Reprise. Two, three, and reverenza. How we end, end all dances. At the end of all dances, you should make a nice reverenza to your partner. Lovely. That looked fantastic. <clears throat> all right. Shall we uh, do it one more time? Okay. Perfect. Let us dive right in then. I will try to watch a little more closely and get less lost in my ghostly partner's eyes. Uh, to the toe. No musicians, don't move around the screen. Just sit still and let me restart you. Okay, two little pickup notes. Two dopey. Reverenza. All the reprise. Singles one double. Reprise the right. Swing and circling. Right hand. One double. Pivot. Two singles with one double. And facing your ghostly partner. Reprise left and right. Forward, single, single, three doubles, three, two, 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 three, one, and a volta tonda. Right, left, three, the right. From the top, two singles, two doubles. All the reprise. Two singles, one double. Reprise the right. 
swimming and circling. Facing, reprise. Two singles, three doubles. Rotonda. And reverenza. <laughs> for the next class. Okay, blended. We are. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's class. Thank you so much for joining me. We were going to have an actual other person here, but she canceled at the last minute. So that's how my life goes. <laughs> it is what it is. Are there any questions? No? The record. Um, where can I find the recording to yes. revisit this? That is a very good question. I will be sending out an email with the link and the place you can get these recordings. These are by a group called um, Gaida Medieval Music, and you can get their music on Spotify or you can order their albums on their website. So I'll send all that out for you so that you can music up, as it were. They're wonderful. They're wonderful. Steps as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The steps as well. Yes, I will send. I will send a cheat, like a you know cheat sheet sort of. If you've done the class, here's here's the memory. But I do recommend for your own memory that you actually take a moment right now after we part ways, to yes. jot down, jot down whatever it is you can remember. Just get it on paper, vomit it out, and that will help uh, build your own memory. And then you can compare it against the notes I send out. Perfect. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it, and hopefully. Uh, if you don't do Wednesday evenings again, hopefully there will be a time that is friendly to my work schedule. So I, think I, I, so, I, think. I, I, I hope so. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I get more interest maybe by next Wednesday. We'll see. Really enjoyable. It was a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much. I'm really knowledge. pleased you decided to give it a try since God knows what you were getting into. <laughs> Nothing. Just finished dinner and then, oh yeah, this is a good time for a dance class. It definitely predates anything I've done by a couple of centuries. So it was really interesting to see what's different and what's similar. And yeah, it is. Is as someone who also has done history through, or dance through the centuries, it is interesting to follow the evolution and see what elements survive over over time. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have to get to my next class, which is a footwork drills class. Um, unless awesome. you. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Well, great. Okay. Well, I hope to see you next week then or at some Hopefully. other time. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Bye. Oh, yeah. Stop recording and start again.